A subject is a being who has a unique consciousness and, or unique personal experiences, or an entity that has a relationship with another entity that exists outside of itself. A subject is an observer and an object is a thing observed. This concept is especially important in continental philosophy where, the subject, is a central term in debates over human autonomy and the nature of the self. The sharp distinction between subject and object corresponds to the distinction, in the philosophy of René Descartes, between thought and extension. Descartes believed that thought was the essence of the mind, and that extension was the essence of matter. In the modern continental tradition, which may plausibly be said to date from Descartes, Debates over the nature of the subject play a role comparable to debates over personhood within the distinct Anglo-American tradition of analytical philosophy. In critical theory and psychology, subjectivity is also the actions or discourses that produce individuals or I, the I, is the subject. The subject in German idealism. Subject as a key term in thinking about human consciousness began its career with the German idealists. In response to David Hume's radical skepticism, the idealist's starting point was Hume's conclusion that there is nothing to the self over and above a big, fleeting bundle of perceptions. The next step was to ask how this undifferentiated bundle comes to be experienced as a unity, as a single subject. Hume had offered the following proposal. The imagination must by long custom acquire the same method of thinking, and run along the parts of space and time in conceiving its objects. Kant, Hegel and their successors sought to flesh out the process by which the subject is constituted out of the flow of sense impressions. Hegel, for example, stated in his preface to the Phenomenology of Spirit that a subject is constituted by the process of reflectively mediating itself with itself. Hegel begins his definition of the subject at a standpoint derived from Aristotelian physics, the unmoved which is also self-moving, that is, what is not moved by an outside force but which propels itself, has a prima facie case for subjectivity. Hegel's next step, however, is to identify this power to move, this unrest that is the subject, as pure negativity. Subjective self-motion, for Hegel, comes not from any pure or simple kernel of authentic individuality, but rather, it is, dot, the bifurcation of the simple, it is the doubling which sets up opposition, and then again the negation of this indifferent diversity and of its antithesis. The Hegelian subject's modus operandi is therefore cutting, splitting and introducing distinctions by injecting negation into the flow of sense perceptions. Subjectivity is thus a kind of structural effect, what happens when nature is diffused, refracted around a field of negativity and the unity of the subject, for Hegel, is in fact a second-order effect, a negation of negation. The subject experiences itself as a unity only by purposefully negating the very diversity it itself had produced. The Hegelian subject may therefore be characterized either as self-restoring sameness or else as reflection in otherness within itself. In short, a subject in the Hegelian sense is subjected to subjection. Postmodern subjects the thinking of Marx and Freud provided a point of departure for questioning the notion of a unitary, autonomous subject, which for many thinkers in the continental tradition is seen as the foundation of the liberal theory of the social contract. These thinkers opened up the way for the deconstruction of the subject as a core concept of metaphysics. Sigmund Freud's explorations of the unconscious mind added up to a wholesale indictment of Enlightenment notions of subjectivity. Among the most radical rethinkers of human self-consciousness was Heidegger, whose concept of day scene or being there displaces traditional notions of the personal subject altogether. Jacques Lacan, inspired by Heidegger and Sauscha, built on Freud's psychoanalytic model of the subject in which the split subject is constituted by a double bind, alienated from jouissance when he or she leaves the real, enters into the imaginary, 
and separates from the other when he or she comes into the realm of language, difference, and demand in the symbolic or the name of the father. Thinkers such as Aldusser, Foucault, or Bourdieu theorize the subject as a social construction. According to Aldusser, the subject is an ideological construction. One's subjectivity exists, always already, and is discovered through the process of interpolation. Ideology inaugurates one into being a subject, and every ideology is intended to maintain and glorify its idealized subject, as well as the metaphysical category of the subject itself. According to Foucault, it is the effect of power and disciplines. Foucault believed it was possible to transform oneself, he used the word ethopoein from the word ethos to describe the process. Subjectivity in analytic philosophy In contemporary analytic philosophy, the issue of subject, and more specifically the point of view of the subject, or subjectivity, has received attention as one of the major intractable problems in philosophy of mind. In the essay What Is It Like to Be a Bat? Thomas Nagel famously argued that explaining subjective experience, the what it is like to be something, is currently beyond the reach of scientific inquiry, because scientific understanding by definition requires an objective perspective which, according to Nagel, is diametrically opposed to the subjective first-person point of view. Furthermore, one cannot have a definition of objectivity without being connected to subjectivity in the first place since they are mutual and interlocked. In Thomas Nagel's book, The View from Nowhere, he asks, What kind of fact is it that I am Thomas Nagel? Subjects have a perspective but each subject has a unique perspective and this seems to be a fact in Nagel's view from nowhere. The Indian view of Brahman suggests that the ultimate and fundamental subject is existence itself, through which each of us as it were looks out as an aspect of a frozen and timeless everything, experienced subjectively due to our separated sensory and memory apparatus. These additional features of subjective experience are often referred to as qualia, bibliography. Alain de Libera, When Did the Modern Subject Emerge? American Catholic Philosophical Quarterly, Volume 82, No. 2, 2008, pp. 181-220. Robert B. Pippin, The Persistence of Subjectivity, On the Kantian Aftermath, Cambridge. Cambridge University Press, 2005. Udo Thiel, The Early Modern Subject. Self-Consciousness and Personal Identity from Descartes to Hume, New York, Oxford University Press, 2011.